Good morning, Church of the Living God. Hello. Happy 2022 to you. <laughs> it's the second day of the new year. Hope you are all doing well. Ooh. Got something for you today. Fortunately, <laughs> this video may turn out to be yet another two-part video. Be honest with you, I do not like doing two-part videos because what happens, you, always, one part gets watched more than the other. But it is what it is. We are going to be going through today in the scriptures, please get your authorized version of the scriptures. We are going to be going through Leviticus chapter 23. But we are going to be examining the feasts of the Lord today. We're going to be looking at that and how they correlate onto us today for our instruction and righteousness in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles for us today, primarily. So this is something that I have personally been wanting to do for quite a while, but recently the Lord uh, just kind of put it upon me and has guided, me, <laughs> has guided me thus. And we are going to look at this. So, hope you're hungry. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And turn with me. Go where we go. Go where I go. Follow me along. We begin in Leviticus chapter 23. We are basically going to be going through this entire chapter of Leviticus uh, 23. Like I said, this is probably going to be another two-part video. So, it is what it is. So let us begin. We are going to be looking at these feasts. And what are these feasts? Passover, also called Pesach, and referred to as the Seder dinner. Pesach, Passover. Second one. The first fruits, Yom Habakurim. The third one, Feast of Weeks, also known as Pentecost, Shavuot. The fourth one, Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah. The fifth, the fifth, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. The sixth. Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot. Then we will be looking at, also, a little bit on the Sabbath. Shabbat or Shabbos. But that is what we're going to be looking at today. Get your scriptures and follow me along. Praise the Lord. Let us begin in Leviticus chapter 23. If you got, uh, I'm not going to be using two sets of scriptures for this video. So if you got one of these uh, ribbon markers, today you'll definitely need it. Let us begin in verse 1, and we will be reading on to verse 8. Let's look at the very first feast, and what is the significance for us today in this dispensation unto us as the church of the living God for our instruction and in righteousness, okay? Leviticus chapter 23. Beginning at verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, holy days. Even these are my feasts. Begins here, I like this. Six days shall work be done. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, and holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. In the fourteenth day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. In the first day ye shall have a holy convocation, ye shall do no servile work therein. 
But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day is an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Passover. Go now to Exodus chapter 12. Let's, let's, what is the Passover? Um, I, I understand that a lot of you of the Church of the Living God are aware of this. Please keep in mind, brethren, that there are a lot of babes who come to the channel. A lot of babes, whether or not they are babes or these devil coadjutors, I don't know. But we got, I get a lot of questions by babes and whatnot. So while you may know this, keep in mind there are those who do not. Okay? So we're going to go through this painstakingly. What is the Passover? What is the significance of the Passover? Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 under verse 13. Follow me along. In the scriptures. The Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron. Uh, Exodus chapter 12 verses 1 and verse 13. And, Aaron, and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt saying. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year unto you. Uh, what is it? The lunar calendar. I think that's what that's called anyway. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel saying. In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep. Or from the goats. Note how it says, or of the goats. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Okay? He came unto his own, and his own received him not. It is obvious, it is evident, excuse me, that our Lord sprang from Judah. Okay? From the tribes of Israel. A Hebrew of the Hebrews himself was our Lord Jesus Christ. He was a Jew. Okay? So... Your lamb shall be without blemish. Jesus Christ never sinned. Okay? God cannot sin. And Jesus Christ is God the Father. Okay? Jesus never sinned. So, your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first year, he was the firstborn son of Mary. Okay? You shall take it out from the sheep. The sheep! came unto his own, and his own received him not. Okay? He came from Judah, from that line of the Hebrew, uh, from the fathers of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? Or from the goats. He did not come from the goats. He came from the sheep, the lost sheep of Israel. Okay? And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And Israel, as a nation, rejected Jesus Christ as their Messiah, as their King. Individually, there were those who knew that, hey, this is our promised Messiah. This is our Mashiach. But nationally, on a bigger scale, they rejected their King. Okay? So, and ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. They rejected their king. And they shall take of the blood. Okay? And strike it on the two side posts. And on the upper door post of the houses. Wherein they shall eat. Okay? So you see? On the side posts and up top. Okay? This does not mean that they were looking forward to the cross here, okay? Because of the, the, um, it was revealed on the pall, okay? And plus, had they known and were looking forward to the cross, Peter would have said, far be this from you, Lord. No, no, they were not looking forward to the cross. But in type, okay? Side posts and the top, okay? That thing, okay? You get it? And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts 
and on the upper doorpost of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire, and yeah, they sure did have a trial by fire on him, didn't they? And unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs shall ye eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the little g gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. So we see the blood, when the destroyer would see the blood, okay? When the destroyer would see the blood, he would pass over. So when the blood of the lamb was upon the house, on the doorpost, because in order to be saved in this dispensation, you have to go in through the door. Who is the door? Our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? You have to go to him on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon the name of the Lord, and may he save you, okay? But you go through the door, and the blood was put on the side posts and on top of the door where they would go into the house. What is a house? Uh, another word you can say a tabernacle, something where people dwell within. Okay, you get it? So, for our instruction in righteousness, what does this mean? Jesus Christ, who died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, shed his blood on the cross to make an atonement for our sins. And when you go unto him, on his conditions, you go through the door, and our Lord Jesus Christ is that door, just like we just saw here in um, Exodus chapter 12, where they put the blood on the doorpost, and these people were to go in through the door and be safe because of the blood that was on the doorposts. Okay, And the destroyer judgment would pass over them. Not that they wouldn't give an account, but that judgment of death to the firstborn among man and beast pass over. Do you see? And for us today, Egypt in type. Remember, and I, brethren, those of you who have been saved, born again, converted for a long time, you know this. Remember the babes, okay? Egypt in type is a type of this world today. And our Lord, upon saving us of the church of the living God, making us new creatures, washing us clean in his blood, okay? He has drawn us out of Egypt, okay? Look at verse 51 in Exodus chapter 12. And it came to pass the selfsame day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out to the land of Egypt by their armies. So Passover, while instituted and given unto the Jews as a holy day that they are to observe, that they were to observe. Today it is not salvific. It is not a requirement for salvation. If you are a Jew, a Hebrew culturally, yes, I do believe you should um, observe Passover. Is it a requirement for your salvation? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And on this channel, there are plenty of videos that deal with that. Look up the uh, playlist uh, onto the Jewish people. We go through it in depth, okay, on, in several places, all right? But for us in instruction and righteousness in this dispensation, the Passover symbolizes unto us that God, when he cleansed us in his blood, brought us out of Egypt, this present world. We are no longer part of this world. We are in the world. We are not of the world, okay? Remember that. Now go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 
1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, being a new creature. Okay? As ye are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, meaning not as you were before you were saved, with the old man, okay? Because when Christ comes into you, seals you until the day of redemption, that circumcision made, made without hands, you are a new creature, and you are to walk as a new creature. But remember, not at gunpoint, because God doesn't force these things upon you. That is why it is worded as it is. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, not as we used to do in Egypt, as of the world, okay? But he has brought us out of the world. And we are new creatures, remember, okay? Neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Now, go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 under verse 12. Okay? See, God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, for our instruction in righteousness, when looking at the Passover, for us today, what can we learn from it? Okay? He brought us out of this, out of the world, out from the clutches of Satan. Okay? His blood cleanseth us from all sin. Okay? We came unto him through him, through the door. Okay? We came to him on his terms, broken of our self-righteousness, contrite, having godly sorrow, because it's our fault, nobody else's. And in fear of the Lord, we called upon his name, and he saved us, if he did in fact save you. Okay? We are his. We went through the door. We didn't save ourselves by just believing or thinking that I'm good enough, that he was, uh, that he died for me because I'm a good person, or that I gave up X, Y, Z to get A, B, C. No, nothing like that. We went through the door. We're not robbers who go up another way. A thief or a robber goes up another way. Okay? You got to remember that. Okay? So since we go in through the door, that blood which cleanseth us from all sin, is upon us, okay? That's why the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sin, past, present, and sins to come. That doesn't mean that you don't repent daily, okay? Okay, you read Romans chapter 6 on that on your own time about that. But 1 Peter chapter 2, Verses 1 under verse 12. And see, when you are received a circumcision made without hands, Christ in you, the hope of glory, sealed until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved, okay? Once Christ is in you, you are a new creature. Things will change, not of your own doing. But Christ who is in you will bring about these changes, making you a new creature. See? They were taken out of Egypt to be brought into something that they knew not of, the promised land, and things were to be new. Okay, you with me? 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 under verse 12. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking. How are we doing at that? How are we doing at that? Oh, excuse me. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. You're not reading the authorized version of the scriptures? Uh, of the word isn't in your uh, little Bible, is it? That ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Note the if. To whom coming, as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Remember, God is a God who chooses. He chose the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the line of the Hebrew that came from Shem. He chose the way of the cross, okay? He is a God that chooses, okay? To whom coming, as unto a living stone, 
disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe is he precious. Oh, yes. But unto them that which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Is Jesus precious unto you? <laughs> I can't describe in mere words just how precious my Lord Jesus Christ, God my Father, my Savior is unto me. It is upon Him that all my hope lies. It is upon Him that my salvation exists. It is His salvation, not mine. How precious is the Lord to you. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Because people will reach a point where you can, you can speak to them the word of truth, you can give them a godly example, but their hearts are gone. Their hearts are hardened. They have been given over because they have already made their choice. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness, the darkness of this world, into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, because we are in the world, we are not of the world, okay? Abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. And now, go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, we want verses 22 on to verse 26. Verses 22 on to verse 26. See, he brought us out of this present world to bring us in to something better, into himself, because we went through the door, okay? He freed us from the bondage of this world. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 22 on to verse 26. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, self-sacrifice, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. A pure heart is a broken heart. A pure heart is a heart that truly does belong unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Not because you just saved yourself by your belief, you wicked heretic. No, no, but call out of, but call on the Lord out of a pure heart. And remember, there are those devils out there that say that calling on the name of the Lord is a work. They're lost. Those of you who dispute calling upon the name of the Lord, every single one of you, you're lost. You're lost. Okay, granted, there might be room for ignorance there, but you're lost. You're lost, every single one of you who dispute calling upon the name of the Lord. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, which is something that our adversaries do very well. They ask foolish and unlearned questions and make ridiculous statements, not watching anything that anyone says or looking at evidence given. No, they're just there to be disputatious. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes, which is what our 
enemies are all about starting strife, starting debate, okay? And the servant of the Lord must not strive. He mustn't fight fire with fire. But be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. Uh, yeah. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. You reject the gospel. You reject our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You're opposing yourself. Why is that? If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. And see, that is what our Lord has freed us from. Taking us out of this world, out of Egypt, setting us free from the snare of the devil. Doesn't mean that we're not going to sin. But we are set free. We are his purchased possession, see. Okay, one second, brethren. Sorry about that, I had to adjust some things here. Now, go to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, meaning that also today we are part of his body, of his flesh, we are his bones and his flesh, we belong unto Christ. We are not little Christs, but we are the body of Christ. We are his ambassadors today in this dispensation, okay? For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So see again, again, the Passover, where our Lord Jesus Christ, God who is our Father, liberated, set free the captives in Egypt of the Jews. For us today, the Passover, God brought us out from this, set us free from the bondage of Satan. Pharaoh, remember, in reading the tale of the Exodus, that Pharaoh is a type of Satan, okay? While Egypt is the type of the world. And through going through that door, which is our Lord Jesus Christ, going through that door on his terms, not being a thief and a robber, climbing up some other way, okay? His blood cleanseth us from all sin. Okay? Are you getting this? This is pretty simple, and it's actually pretty beautiful, isn't it? It is. Go to Acts chapter 20, okay? Just one verse in Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Just one verse here. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit, hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, not Christians, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Mm-hmm. Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. Verses 16 on to verse 18. When our Lord Jesus Christ was talking to um, Saul, who would become Paul. This uh, we covered in the previous video. Uh, Paul is giving the rundown on to King Agrippa. Okay, But Acts chapter 26, verses 16 on to verse 18. Remember... If you come to our Lord on his terms, you go through the door and the blood is there to cleanse you from all sin, he comes into you. He seals you until the day of redemption. Okay? Permanently sealed. Once saved, always saved. That circumcision made without hands is within you. Okay? But rise, our Lord speaking to Paul here, but, but rise and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee. And this is the mystery, that us Gentiles are grafted into the tree of the Jew. 
to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God and that, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Okay? And let's go now to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Okay? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 4 on to verse 10. But ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light. If you are truly saved, born again, converted, a new creature in Christ Jesus. You came unto him on his terms through the door. You weren't a thief and a robber and climbed up some other way. No, you went to him on his terms. Broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord called upon his name. Okay? Then ye are all children of light. If you come to him on his terms, not your own. And the children of the day, we are not of the night nor of darkness like the children of this world are, whose father is the devil, who work for the Vatican and the Jesuits, okay? But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, the breastplate covers your heart, okay? And for an helmet... The hope of salvation. The hope of salvation. The blessed hope. The redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? We're going to read that really quickly. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Go back to Exodus chapter 12. Go back to Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. Look at verse, verses 12 and verse 13 again. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods, little g, of Egypt, all the gods of the world, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And what is that judgment that's coming? The time of Jacob's trouble. God's wrath upon this world. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses wherein ye are, where ye are. Excuse me. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Once saved, always saved in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Now, go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. We are going to be reading verses 3 on to verse 14. Okay? Already talked about in a video the Lord gave me to do about Calvinism. Okay? Calvinism is a lie, okay? The select and non-electing Mr. Calvin, as brilliant as he was, he really messed that one up. If I can remember, I'll put that in the description box of this one, okay? Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 under verse 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ unto himself, the redemption of the purchase uh, possession. Once we are sealed unto the day of redemption, which we're going to look at in this very chapter, uh, once he saves us, our destination is fixed. We're predestinated to be with Christ, okay? Not what Calvin taught, okay? According to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of your own belief, that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, the works of the law, 
lest any man should boast. Okay. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. In whom we have redemption through his blood, which was on the side post and the upper part of the door, which we are to go in through and will be safe. Get it? Okay. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath proposed in himself, that in, this dispens that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, and making of himself of twain one new man. Okay? In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom, after, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. See? Okay? So, the blood that was on the doorpost. You go in. You are safe. We are his purchased possession. And when he will call us up, whenever that will be, be resurrected, you know, the redemption of the purchased possession, we will go out and leave this behind for all of those of you who are not saved, but yet saved yourself by your own belief or whatever it is, whatever heresy you might have fallen for. Okay? Now, go to Colossians chapter 1, verses 14 on to verse 17. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. See, it's the blood, not the flesh, you idiot devils. It's the blood that makes the atonement for the soul, not the flesh. Not the flesh, okay? Oh, well, you wouldn't have blood without the flesh. Oh, shut up. Do remember that Moses, Aaron, they were able to turn water into blood. And even the magicians were able to turn water into blood, okay? It is the blood, not the flesh. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him we for by him were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. The word made flesh. The Word. Jesus Christ is the Word. Okay? The Word made flesh. Jesus Christ. What does the name Jesus Christ mean? Jehovah saves. Christ means anointed one. Okay? And he is before all things. And by him, all things consist. Because Jesus Christ is the Father. He is the creator of heaven and earth. Okay? And as we have seen in the Passover, Pesach, for our instruction in righteousness, it begins with the Passover. When God takes you out of Egypt and guides you, is guiding you onto that promised land, that inheritance with him. Okay? And remember, and like I said, we've talked about this at, in depth in several videos before. Look in the playlist onto the Jewish people. One of those videos covers it, okay? Today, in this dispensation, keeping the Sabbath and the Passover in order to be saved, stay saved, 
For you, Hebrews, those of you who are truly Jews, it's not a requirement to be saved. Should you, as a Jew, observe the Passover? Yes, I believe you should. But remember, it is not in this dispensation today that it's not a requirement for your salvation. Okay? Not at all. We have spoken about this in depth before in other videos. Check out that playlist, okay? Now, let's go back to Leviticus chapter 23. Let's look at now the first fruits. See, it begins with the Passover, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We go through the door. His blood cleanseth us from all sin, okay? We go through the door. We belong unto him. That blood is upon us. We are his purchased possession, okay? And God hath not called us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation, the redemption of the purchased possession, okay? He has called us unto salvation, not unto wrath the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven-year time period that will come after we are redeemed, okay? We are not appointed onto that, okay? Not at all. And because it begins with the Passover, let's look at this, the first fruits. The feast of the first fruits, Yom Hapakorum, Leviticus chapter 23, verses 9 under verse 14. Follow me along. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, talking about the promised land that they were to get, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then shall ye then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest, and he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath. The priest shall wave it. Keep this in mind about the Sabbath. You're, you're going to see that the Sabbath is involved virtually with all of these feasts. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Let's continue. Verse 12. And ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheaf and the sheaf and he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. And the meat offering thereof shall be two tenth deals of fine flour mingled with oil, an offering made by fire unto the Lord for a sweet savor. And the drink offering thereof shall be of the wine, of wine, the fourth part of an hen. And ye shall eat neither bread nor parched corn nor green ears until the self same day that ye have brought an offering unto our unto your God. It shall be a statute forever throughout. Your generations in all your dwellings. Okay? Go to Romans chapter 8. Now, the first fruits, reaping the harvest after the Passover, okay? After you have been brought out, okay? The first fruits. First fruits. Go to Romans. Book of Romans. And when the Lord brings you out and you go through the door, Washed in the, uh, cleansed by the blood of the crucified one, okay? Sealed unto this, the day of redemption. You have that circumcision made without hands, okay? He makes you a new creature. And being a new creature in Christ Jesus, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, set apart, Acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 18, on to verse 27. The first fruits upon being made a new creature after being brought out of Egypt. Okay? Verses 18 on verse 27 in Romans chapter 8. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Oh, and we're going to be going through some stuff, brethren. I hope you're ready. I hope you're prepared in your spirit for what troubles we are going to be encountering. 
it's only going to get worse. <laughs> Apparently, in Israel of all places, they have, what is this, um, Fluorona variant? which is a combination of the influenza and the corona virus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're starting early, aren't they? Let's continue. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but, reason, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Yes, the whole creation groaneth. We have the church of the living God. Lord, please call us up. Take us out of here. That's what we're looking for. These people the lost of the world, they're looking for the son of perdition, their savior, okay? Their savior, they're going to call the son of perdition. He's their savior. Well, the true savior is our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? But yes, all of the creation is groaning right now, isn't it? And not only they, making distinction here in verse 23, but ourselves also, who are the they? Those who are of the world. But of ourselves, those of us who are saved, born again, converted, new creatures of our Lord Jesus Christ, Church of the Living God, okay? Which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting for the, re, for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of the purchased possession, the redemption of our body. First fruits. The first fruits. What is this talking about? When the Lord saves you, you have the first fruits of being saved. You have Him. Okay? Hence, when He makes you a new creature, you get those first fruits. Okay? Being a new creature. Something new. You were brought out of the world, out of Egypt. You died unto yourself. Okay? Then he comes into you. He seals you until the day of redemption. And that seal, okay, that circumcision made without hands, will create in you fruit, the first fruits. He makes you a new creature, see? You get it? Let's continue. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. <laughs> yeah. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, capital S, because the he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And cross-reference this with 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 under verse 8. The lost world is groaning right now. They want a Savior. But see, the lost world doesn't want to have anything to do with Christ. Because coming to Christ, there is a requirement. There is a demand put upon you. You have to die to yourself which these coadjutors here on YouTube and on other platforms, these people have not done. They're not dead unto themselves. They just put on the name Christian as if it were a t-shirt that could be put on and put off. Not being born again. Not being a new creature in Christ Jesus. And we have the church of the living God, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, hmm, tabernacle. It is made as, right there, as a reference, as a body. Hmm, keep that in mind. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, an house 
not made with hands, a spiritual body, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. Down here in the flesh, what happens? Our bodies ache. I have a thorn in my flesh. I know several people, uh, my wife has, you know, a fake hip and our problems with her arm. I know many of you, um, a brother from North Dakota who's been having also chest problems and whatnot himself. Many of you, but see, when we go to be with the Lord, a glorified body, that we won't have any of these problems anymore, see? See, let's continue. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Naked, <laughs> excuse me. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. See, we're going to die one day. We're all going to die. But see, now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit, that seal until the day of redemption. The unction from the Holy One, okay? Our Lord who lives within us, okay? You devils don't know that because you're lost. Christ does not live in you, okay? Very simple to explain that unto you devils because you're lost, okay? Let's continue. Therefore, we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing, willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Oh, brother, sister, you wanted to get out of here yesterday. I, so did I. I wanted to get out of here, tw uh, what, uh, 20 minutes ago. So did you. But of course we're here. God has a purpose for us to be here because, you know, we're still here. And he who, who, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. We as the church of the living God are here to hinder, to let that spirit of Antichrist. Because that man of sin, the son of perdition, cannot be revealed until we get taken up. And how are we doing fighting? The enemy. Hmm? Now, also there's another reference to being the first fruits here in Romans chapter 16, verse 5. Just we'll, we're just going to look at the one verse, okay? Because see, when it says that it's being the first fruits, okay? That we are the first fruits who first trusted in Christ, okay? First fruits. When the Lord saves you, what's the first thing that happens? Okay? You are made a new creature in Christ Jesus. Your destination is fixed. You have the first fruits. See? Okay? Uh, Romans chapter 16, verse 5. Here's one verse. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved Apentius, who is the first fruits of Achaia, Unto Christ. In that context, that first fruits of Achaia means he was the first one who was of the church of the living God in Achaia. Okay, he was the first fruits of Achaia unto Christ. Okay, that's what that means. Now, go to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, verses 19. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I just, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me, wrong one. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Verses 20 on to verse 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 20 on to verse 23. You're going to notice we will, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians a few times here. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 20 on to verse 23. 
But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Now, is Christ the first one who was risen from the dead? No, no, he was not. You read in the Old Testament that there were several, uh, a guy who touched Elisha's bones was raised from the dead. Elijah raised someone from the dead, okay? Our Lord Jesus Christ himself raised people from the dead. So, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. So, our Lord Jesus Christ was not the first one raised from the dead, was he? No. What does this mean? Keep reading. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, okay, different dispensation, yeah, even so in Christ shall all be made alive, but every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming, Christ the firstfruits, okay, what does this mean? How, when did this dispensation begin? Okay, it began with the death of the testator, and we're going to be looking at that. The New Testament did not begin with the birth of Jesus. It began with the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. It began with the death. So, he was raised for our justification, okay? So, when it says here, the first fruits of them that slept, being resurrected, okay? He was not the first one brought back to life, okay? Raised from the dead. No, he was not. But in this dispensation, in this dispensation, he is the first fruits of this current dispensation. See, you have to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. So when it says here, don't look at me, look at the scripture, okay? When it says here in verse 20, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept, okay? Meaning the first in this dispensation because he brought in this new dispensation by the death, burial, and resurrection. And then when you look at verse 23, but every man in his, own, in his order, Christ the first fruits, okay? He was the first one risen from the dead to bring in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, okay? Okay? Afterward, they that are Christ's at his coming. All right? So see when it's, again, look at verse 20. When it's making reference to him as the first fruits, Christ was obviously, like we have already said, he is not the first one to be raised from the dead, but in his being resurrected, brought in this dispensation, hence being the first fruits of this dispensation, the beginning of their, the beginning of this dispensation. Does that make sense? Okay, you get it? Now, Go to, and also there's another reference, uh, very similar to the reference in uh, Romans chapter 16, verse 5. Look at this. In 1 Corinthians chapter, um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse uh, 15. Look at this. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanas, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. First fruits of Achaia, and go back now to Romans chapter 16. Romans uh, chapter uh, 16, verse 5. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well beloved Apentius, who is the first fruits of Achaia unto Christ. And in verse 15, in First uh, Corinthians chapter 16, I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia at, at, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Is that a contradiction? No, that's not a contradiction. Because here in verse 5 in Romans chapter 16, it clearly says that this Apentius, who is the first fruits of Achaia unto Christ. But then it says here, note what it says here. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house. House. Okay? Not a building. 
Remember, we are of Jesus Christ. We are the body of Christ. We are of the house of Christ. Okay? So, the relation or whatever. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Christ. Okay? The first fruits of Christ in Achaia was Apentius, or Apentius, or whatever, Apentius, or whatever his name is, having a pronunciation problem, beg your pardon. He was the first fruits of Achaia, but the first house was that of the house of Stephanus, the first family, if you will, while he was the first one saved. It's not a contradiction, by the way. Okay, do you see that? Remember, words have meaning. Examine these things, brethren. Apentius was the first uh, fruits unto Kaya. The house of Stephanus was the first fruits. The house of Stephanus. Those who were on uh, belonged unto Stephanus. While well, Stephanus was not the first fruits himself, but those who belonged unto him were. See how that works? As far as we know, probably came to that to be like that by Apentius, huh? Hmm? But keep that in mind. That is not a contradiction. Now go to James chapter one. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. We want verses 12 on to verse 18. James chapter 1. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, of, tempted I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, but God manifests in the flesh. The flesh could be tempted because flesh is evil. Okay? I don't know why. Well, I do know why. But I don't know why it's so difficult for you devils to figure that one out. I do because you're lost. But anyway, never mind. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father, capital F, of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Hmm. The thing to note about the book of James, who is it written to? James chapter 1, verse 1. A servant of God, uh, uh, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. The book of James is specifically written on to the Jews. And if you read James chapter 2, you might be like, well, isn't that a contradiction to what Paul taught? I've heard that they're standing back to back. No, it's this is for a different dispensation. The book of James is written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. There are things that cross dispensational lines for us in the book of James, absolutely. But the book of James is not written for us today in this dispensation. It is written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. So when it says there in verse 18, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Hmm. First fruits. So, you mean there could be two different types of first fruits? In this dispensation, Christ being the first fruits, bringing in this dispensation, okay? The time of the Gentiles, where we are saved by grace through faith. When the Lord calls you out of the world, out of Egypt, from under the headship of Satan, from the power of darkness into the light, okay? And he come unto you. You come unto him through the door, his way, okay? Not your own. 
through brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord and calling upon his name. You come unto him by his terms. You go through the door. The blood covers you, cleanseth you from all sin. You are sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? Christ is in you. You have the first fruits. You are a new creature. Okay? You get it? You get You, you with me? Okay? But there might be some of you be like, well, what about Revelation chapter 14? What about Revelation chapter 14? Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14, verses 1 on to verse 5. Okay? Note, this is Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter three, uh, 13, the mark of the beast is implemented. The church of the living God is not on earth during this time. Okay? You, you with me? Okay? First fruits. Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. He is the first fruit. The first of this dispensation, God himself. It begins with God. Remember in the beginning, God, okay? And when he saves you, if you come to him on his terms, you don't go through the door, not a thief and a robber, climb up some other way, you have the first fruits of him saving you. You have him within you. You get it. Do you get it? Okay? Those first fruits, do you get it? Okay? He's the first fruits. He comes into you. You have God living within you. You have the first fruits. You are the first fruits. Do you get it? Okay? But what about Revelation chapter 14? Revelation chapter 14, verses 1 under verse 5. And remember too, the book of James is written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble, just like the book of Hebrews is. Okay? Look at this. Revelation chapter 14. The church of the living God is not on the earth during this time. But I can bet you there'll probably be a whole lot of Christians around here during this time. Those are the church of the living God. Huh? And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred and forty-four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. One hundred and forty-four thousand. Jews, Hebrews, who are the only ones during the time of Jacob's trouble who are sealed until the day of redemption, <laughs> you could say, but are sealed, okay? Because beg me for say, I beg your pardon for saying that, okay? Uh, the hundred and forty-four thousand are the only ones sealed who have eternal security during the time of Jacob's trouble. Everyone else does not. The hundred and forty-four thousand who are Hebrews, who are Jews. They are the only ones sealed during the time of Jacob's trouble. Everyone else, it's faith and works. You take the mark of the beast, you're going to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts. Eternal security is not there during the time of Jacob's trouble. Unless you're one of the 144,000 Jews, not Jehos, Jews. Okay? Keep that in mind. Verse 2. And I heard a voice from heaven. As the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. Hmm, that's going to come into play. Remember this. Remember this. Of a great thunder, a voice of a great thunder. Remember that. It'll come into play later. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts, and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. The 144,000 who were sealed. The only ones during the time of Jacob's trouble. Are you getting where this is going? I think some of you might. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. This is the time of Jacob's trouble. A different dispensation, remember. For they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth, because they're sealed. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Really? Now, let's read verse 5. And in their mouth was no guile, was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. So, okay, now looking at verse 4, it's like, okay, wait, whoa, whoa, time out, Brad, wait a minute. 
You just said about the first fruit thing. What do you do with this? It's a different dispensation, dear friend. What it says here that these are the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Is this the time of the Gentiles right now? Is this this current dispensation? No. We, what ends the dispensation that we are in right now is the redemption of the purchased possession, being caught up. Okay, We're going to look at that too as we continue. But that is what ends this dispensation. Okay, Hence, the time of Jacob's trouble. That is the dispensation that comes after this dispensation that we are in. Okay, And so where it says here that these are the first fruits of God and to the Lamb, that means that these 144,000 Jews, Hebrews, okay, they are the first fruits unto God and the Lamb of that dispensation. You get it? Yeah? Uh-huh. Okay? Just like in this dispensation, with the death, burial, and resurrection, okay? We come to him on his terms, through the door, not as a thief and a robber, okay? We come to him on his terms, broken, contrite, fear the Lord, call upon his name, and may he save you. He washes you in his blood. You are cleansed from your sin, okay? You're going to heaven. You are sealed until the day of redemption. You have the first fruits within you. Do you get it, okay? It's a different dispensation. Rightly dividing the word of truth different, okay? This is not a contradiction again, okay? It's not a contradiction. They are the first fruits of the dispensation of the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, you got it? It's pretty simple to get that one, okay? See, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. You got these hyper-dispensationalists, so-called. Um, most of them are these um, uh, free gracer heretics. They call themselves dispensational. But yet, it's faith alone from Genesis on the Revelation. They're not dispensational whatsoever. What determines a dispensation? How one is made right with God. And if you're made right with God throughout the entirety of Scripture, from the beginning, Genesis, unto the end, Revelation, then... Well, what? No. No. No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, no, no. Don't fall for these easy believism heretics, brethren. And you lost people, please. get When you get some twit coming to you, just believe, and I know from you lost people that have contacted me with sincere questions, you know, even you lost people know, what these easy believism heretics are telling you doesn't make sense to you. Does it? No, it doesn't. It's ludicrous. It's nonsense. Okay? But... Go back to 1 Corinthians 15, verses 20, on to verse 23. Look at this, okay? Again, let's, let's drive this home. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 20, on to verse 23. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Okay? It began with God. Remember what he said in the book of John. If the world hated you, know that it hated me first before it hates you. Okay? He is the first fruits. He brought in. This dispensation, he paid the debt for sin. The spotless, sinless lamb. Okay, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay, he's the first fruits of this dispensation. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, Adam, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? For as in Adam all die, your old man, even so in Christ, the seal until the day of redemption, that first fruits that is within you, okay, shall all be made alive. But every man in his own, in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward, they that are Christ's at his coming. At his coming. When is Christ coming? Uh, towards the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? We, see, when he calls us up, 
we he doesn't come down and get us no he calls us up to him at his coming what's his second coming his second coming okay uh go to ephesians chapter 2 ephesians chapter 2 Ephesians chapter 2, verses 13 on to verse 18. Okay? But now is Christ Je but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the flesh of Christ. <clears throat> Excuse me, you weren't expecting that, were you? Oh, I know you devils hate that, don't you? <clears throat> For but now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometime, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, taking us Gentiles and grafting us in to the tree of the Jew. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. Why? For to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Of twain, Jews and Gentiles. Hebrews and Gentiles. Making of twain one new man. Okay? Culturally, that's a different story. Salvifically, we are all one in Christ Jesus. Culturally, you are of Ham, I am of Japheth, uh, you are of Japheth, they are of Shem, okay? Okay? But in salvation, salvifically, we are all one. Culturally, that's a totally different thing. As far as kindreds, that's different. Salvation, we're all one, okay? And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body, by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. Afar off. Us Gentiles were afar off. Those were who were nigh. The Jews who were supposed to know all of this. You know, like some of those who actually were saved by our Lord Jesus Christ being Hebrews. Okay? For through him we both have access by one capital S spirit unto the Father. And that spirit dwells within us, and that is the Lord, and the Lord is that spirit, okay? Okay? Do you, do you get this? It's pretty pretty simple, actually, when you look at it, when you search the scriptures, whether these things be so. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> okay, now let's look at the third one here. Go back to Leviticus chapter 23, the feasts, the Feast of Weeks, Shavuot, also referred to as Pentecost. You look up the word Pentecost, it appears only twice in the authorized version of the scriptures. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1, and in Acts chapter 20, verse 16. Okay? But, Leviticus chapter 23, verses 15 now, on to verse 22. Follow me along. Uh, we're reading to verse 21, excuse me. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Now, you do seven times seven, that's 49. Add a Sabbath. It says after the Sabbath, but after the 49 days, there's a Sabbath, hence 50 days. Okay? Let's continue. Let's reread this at verse 15. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete, even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath. There's your 50. Shall ye number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tenths, two tenth deals. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be bacon with leaven, with leaven, note that. 
They are the first fruits unto the Lord. And ye shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish of the first year, and one young bullock and two rams. They shall be for a burnt offering unto the Lord, and their meat offering and their drink offerings, even an offering made by fire of sweet savor unto the Lord. Then ye shall sacrifice one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace offerings. And the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits for a wave offering before the Lord with the two lambs. They shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. And ye shall proclaim on the selfsame day that it may be an holy convocation unto you. Ye shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statute forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. Okay? Feast of Weeks. Now on this, go to Exodus chapter 34. Exodus chapter 34. We want verses 22 on to verse 26. Exodus chapter 34, verses 22 on to verse 26. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks, of the first fruits of wheat harvest, and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. Thrice in the year shall all your children appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. And what are those three feasts? It is Passover, uh, Feast of Weeks, and I do believe it is the Day of Atonement. Those are the three biggies that they were to attend, no matter what, okay? This is what he's talking about. Passover, Feast of Weeks, and Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, okay? Pesach, Shavuot, Yom Kippur. Okay, let's continue. Thrice in the year shall all your men and children appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. And I will cast out the nations before thee and enlarge thy borders. Neither shall any man desire thy land when thou shalt go up to appear before the Lord thy God thrice in the year. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven. Neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover be left unto the morning. The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring unto the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not see the kid in his mother's milk. Feast of weeks. Okay? We have Passover being brought out. First fruits. First fruits, Christ within you, the hope of glory. Okay? And also first fruits in different dispensations. Okay? Feast of weeks. Okay, and as we just saw, verse 25, Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven, neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover be left unto the morning. The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring unto the house of the Lord thy God, thou shalt not see a kid in his mother's milk. Now go to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 16. Deuteronomy chapter 16. Come on, fingers, work with me. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 9 under verse 12. Seven weeks shalt thou number unto thee. Begin to number the seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest to pluck, put the sickle to the corn. And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the Lord thy God, with a tribute of a free will offering of thine hand, which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God, according as the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God, thou and thy son and thy daughter, and thy manservant, and thy maidservant, and the Levite that is within thy gates, and the stranger and the fatherless, and the widow that are among you, in the place which the Lord thy God hath chosen to place his name there. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in Egypt, and thou shalt observe and do these statutes. Hmm. Hmm. Remembering. Hmm. Very interesting. Go to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. 
Now we go to Acts chapter 3. <laughs> Come on, fingers, work with me. I beg your pardon, brethren. Acts chapter 3, verses 19 on to verse 26. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall, refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing, Feast of Tabernacles, Pentecost, Shavuot, okay? Feast of Weeks, times of refreshing, remember this. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. What happened uh, at Pentecost? The Holy Ghost, God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord is that Spirit, came upon the disciples, the apostles, remember? Okay? Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses... Truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God rise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And this is a reference unto Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 on to verse 19. Go look that up on your own time. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you, first God, <laughs> unto you first God having raised up his son Jesus sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities hmm. so the feast of weeks is gathering okay all the apostles the disciples were gathered together and what was given the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2 verse 1 when they were all gathered together at Pentecost right which is the feast of weeks Pentecost means 50, okay? What was given? What was sent? Verse 20, And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? All right? So, the Feast of Weeks is the harvest, reaping, right? Okay? Kind of the fruits of the first fruits, you could say? Because you get brought out of Egypt, out of the world, you are given the first fruits, Christ in you, okay? First fruits, Feast of Weeks, okay? And note verse 26 here, Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you, in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Okay? Um, first, go to Luke. Go to Luke 24. Luke 24. You read in the book of Acts, even though Paul was the apostle unto the Gentiles, it was to the Jew first. See, the kingdom of heaven, the thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ on earth at Jerusalem, the kingdom of heaven was first offered unto the Jews, the Hebrews. They rejected the kingdom of heaven. Okay, They rejected Christ being their king. Just like they did in the book of uh, Samuel. They, they, you know, when Samuel, when the Lord said to Samuel, they haven't rejected you, but they have rejected me from ruling over them. Okay? Israel, as a nation, rejected the kingdom of heaven. It was prophesied to do so because Christ was going to go to the cross, die, bury, and raise again the third day, according to the scripture, shed his blood to make the perfect atonement for sins. Some of you might be like, well, what, why did he do that? If he didn't, if he didn't offer... He wouldn't be a just God, would he? Because someone's like, well, you knew we were going to do it, but you never gave us a chance. See, our God is just, perfect, and righteous in all his ways. 
if he didn't offer, even though he knew, even though it was prophesied in Isaiah 53, even though he knew, if he didn't offer, he wouldn't be just God, see? Okay? So the kingdom of heaven was first offered on to the Jews as a nation. The kingdom of heaven, they rejected it. After the death, burial, and resurrection, the good news, the gospel, was first presented on to who? Luke chapter 24, verses 44, on to verse 49. And he said unto them, now this, the death, burial, and resurrection, bloodshed, this is this dispensation, this current dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, okay? This is this current dispensation, right now, what we're looking at in Luke chapter 24. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning, concerning me. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Okay? Christ came here to die. Okay? To shed his blood to make the perfect atonement for sins because the blood of bulls and goats could never take away sin. Just cover them. The blood of God, Jesus Christ the Father, crucified on the cross, his blood gets rid of it. See? Okay? Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Who opened his under their understanding? The Lord. And the spirit of truth, he will guide you into all truth. And the Lord is that spirit. Hello, people. One God consisting of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? A. Clock in England. Uh, you know, there are parts in the Old Testament where uh, the Lord says, and my soul will abhor you. <laughs> yeah, way to go, genius. Huh? Okay. Verse 46. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer, the anointed one, and to raise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Okay? Now, Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. You gotta rightly divide the word of truth, people. Okay? These hyper-dispensationalists, these easy-believism devils, they say they are dispensational. They are not! What makes a dispensation? How one is made right with God. Okay? And if it's faith alone from beginning to end, there's no change. What is different in dispensations is how one is made right with God. Okay? That is what is different. That is what makes the dispensation. Okay? How one is made right with God. God's grace, if, God, if we didn't have God's grace, none of us, none of us would be here. We'd go phew, up like a puff and he'd be right to do so. Okay? Beware of these easy believism devils, people. Beware of these people. They say they are dispensational. They're not. They do not rightly divide the word of truth. Except when it comes to attacking the true way of salvation in this dispensation. Then they'll say garbage like, prayer is a work, calling on the name of the Lord is a work, that's for the Jews. See, then they try to become dispensational. They're liars. They're wicked devils. Beware of these people. Beware of these people. And you watch. They're, they came out of the woodwork in 2021. Oh, boy. You watch. It's going to get worse this year. You watch. You watch, okay? But Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, okay? For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. You have a Bible? Uh, is Christ in there? 
You have the scriptures. It says in the right. You have your NIV. Does it say uh, Christ after it says the gospel? It doesn't, does it? <laughs> Throw away your Bible. Get the scriptures. Yes! Distinction, buddy boy! <clears throat> Never mind. Beg your pardon. Enough of that. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first. And also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile people. Okay? For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith in what God will do to faith in what God has done. Okay? As it is written, the just shall live by faith. So it was to the Jew first. Hmm. Hmm. So, okay. The kingdom of heaven. Okay? The feast of weeks. The refreshing. Okay? The kingdom of heaven first came to the Jews. The Hebrews. They rejected the kingdom of heaven. Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. The good news. The gospel of this dispensation was first offered unto the Jews, the Hebrews. What happened? I'll tell you what happened. Acts chapter 7. See, there are those out there that will tell you that the gospel is Acts 2.38. Repent and be baptized and you'll get to speak like a devil. No, 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 that is not the gospel. It, this is this, it is in this dispensation, but what happened there? See, and these hyper dispensational this dispensationalists will say that there are two bodies. There is one body of the Jew and one body of the Gentile. But yet we already looked at that he made of twain one man. So there is not two churches. There are not two bodies. We are all one in Christ Jesus. What happened first was God was being just, right, and equal. If he didn't offer the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews, he wouldn't be right and equal and fair. Yeah, you knew we were going to reject, but you, you didn't even give us a chance. God is fair, just, and equal. After the death, burial, and resurrection, he shed his blood to pay for sins, right? Okay? Here's the gospel. Here's the good news. Okay? The spiritual kingdom of God. If he didn't offer it onto the Jews first, they were like, well, you, you, you didn't offer it. See, our God is fair, just, and equal. It is to the Jew first. Uh, remember in Matthew chapter 15, verse 26? Look that up. What did our Lord Jesus Christ refer to a Gentile as? A dog. It's not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. But see, God used them dogs to graft them dogs into the perfect tree of the Jew. Okay? But Acts chapter 7, what happened? As with the kingdom of heaven. Okay? As with the kingdom of heaven. They rejected the kingdom of heaven, the rule of God himself sitting on the throne in Jerusalem. They rejected it. Okay? They rejected it. Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? Brings in this new dispensation. The gospel offered primarily to the Jews at first, to the Jew first. What happened? Acts chapter 7, verses 51 under verse 54. Stephen gives a rundown to the, uh, the council, the ones who should have known this. Kind of covered this in the previous video, but it's meat for this one. And here at the end of Stephen's sermon, he really lets them have it. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shoot before of the coming of the just one. Talking of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers who have received the law by the dispos disposition, disposition excuse me, of angels and have not kept it. What happened? When they heard these things, they were cut, not pricked. We talked about this in the previous video. 
when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. They rejected the gospel unto them primarily. Jews, Hebrews can be saved today. Absolutely. But of course. But it was initially as with the kingdom of heaven. So with the gospel. It was to the Jew first. And in every single occurrence. In every single occurrence. Okay. What happened? Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. Let the scriptures tell you. Acts chapter 13. Verses 45 on to verse 47. Okay? Acts chapter 13, verses 45 on to verse 47. Let's read verses 44 on to verse 47. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, the Jew, the Hebrew. But seeing ye put it far from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. You know in the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, where the Lord said, appeals to the innate things, O hear, O heavens, uh, give ear, O heavens, and hear, O earth. The Lord has brought up children, and they have uh, rejected me. The ox knoweth his owner, the ass knows his crib, but my people do not know, nor do they consider. I just totally bradized that. That's in Isaiah chapter 1. Go read it on your own time. Okay? So, God appealed to his own people with the things that he had intended for them, but they rejected it, so he had to go, which he planned all along on doing anyway, of course, but he went to outside in order to make them jealous. And that, and it is in this where people come up with the satanic replacement theology that and this is what catholicism is they say they are jews and they are not catholics don't call themselves jews you're right but they they want to bring people into bondage under their law do they not and that's why they focus on peter okay because peter was the apostle unto the jews the circumcision and the hebrew the jew is the apple of god's eye Remember, everything revolves around the Jew, the Hebrew, Israel. Everything does not revolve around America, around jolly good England, around Canada. Okay? It doesn't revolve around us. It revolves around Israel. It revolves around the Hebrew, God's chosen people, the apple of his, God, uh, apple of his eye. And hence... Since the Hebrew is the apple of God's eye, here comes Satan with his church, Mystery of Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, with her army, the Jesuit order, <coughs> which these coadjutors on YouTube serve. Whether or not they themselves are Jesuits doesn't matter. You're working for them. Okay? Okay? So Satan comes along with his church seeking to replace that, to counterfeit that. So that's why you can say of the Catholics, even though they don't verbally say they are Jews, they are replacement theology. They think they want you to believe that the church has replaced Israel. <laughs> Not happening, buddy. Okay? But let's, okay, let's bring this to, uh, let's bring this up. We have to do it. Romans chapter 11. Okay? I know Stephen Anderson is a big replacement theology that the church has replaced Israel. The mystery that Paul talks about in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. What is the mystery? See, Catholics are all about mystery, mystery, because they want to keep you in darkness. The mystery has been revealed that us... Romans chapter 11, verses 1 on to verse 12. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite 
of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. Watch ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. And grace, God's grace in this dispensation, we are saved by grace through faith. Faith is our response to God's grace, okay? What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for. But the election, the election, the way of Christ. This is not the Calvinism thing, okay? Beware of Calvinism, okay? But the elect, but the election hath obtained it. The elected way of the cross. That's what that's referring to. It's not like Calvin says, these people are going to heaven without their say-so. They're, they're going whether they have anything at all to say. Uh, they're going without their knowledge. These people are going to hell without anything, without any hope, without any say. They can't, they can't do anything. It's elect and non-elect. It's not that. Okay? That's what Calvin taught. That's heresy. That's dangerous heresy. That leads to pride. Okay? That leads to undue torment and sorrow. Okay? Leads to confusion. No. But the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. The election, the way of the cross, which is comprised of both Jew and Greek. Greek is a Gentile, okay? Let's continue. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, unto this day. And David saith, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back away. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather, through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles. Don't look at me. Look at that verse. To provoke them to jealousy. Our Lord did refer to us Gentiles as dogs. And in Isaiah chapter 1, where he appeals to the innate, sense, uh, innate things and to oxen and asses, but yet my people do not know, neither do they consider. See, we were brought in to make the Jew jealous. Everything revolves around the Hebrew, the Jew. Oh, and how many of you hate that? A lot of you do. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? Like I said in the previous video, if one of these devils who spends 24 hours a day playing keyboard warrior, coming up with countless accounts from betwixt their buttocks, playing, pretending to be other people, what happened if these people got saved? And that energy to serve their father, the devil, was turned to be used of the Lord. Wow, huh? Wow. Wow, how great that would be. Same principle. Have you ever witnessed to the Jews, huh? I've had a Jew spit right between my eyes. Okay? And the Lord has used me to bring it to his people. Okay? I've seen it. Like jealousy. You think the Jews are jealous of what is Christian today? There's no way. Why do you? This is why I say, get rid of the word Christian. Okay? That's why I'm so adamant about that. Because I've, I've seen it. The Jew? You bring a Christian to him? The Crusaders with the crosses on their tunics. Joyce Meyer, Benny Hinn. Joel Osteen. 
Thanks, Catholicism. And you know, with what Satan has done to that name, Christian, we never refer to ourselves as that. Okay? Peter brought it up saying it's better to die than that with being called a Christian than being called a murderer. Not that we called ourselves that. Okay? This is why I'm so adamant about getting rid of that term. Because look at all these online here, especially on YouTube, these devils. All these guys call themselves King James Bible. And who gives you Bibles? Catholicism? Christians. They call themselves Christians. And they're the ones who are bickering to and fro and causing all the problems. No, sir. Not me. Don't want any of that. And how is this within the Feast of, uh, feast of Weeks? Feast of, re of Weeks were the times of refreshing. They were given the Holy Ghost at the time of Pentecost. Feast of Weeks. Okay? You had the Passover brought out. You have the first fruits, Christ in you. Pentecost. You know, the first fruits, the result of those first fruits, the harvest. Okay? And while we're here in Romans chapter 11, verses 25 on to verse 28. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, meaning the elected line, the chosen line of the Hebrew, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Does that kind of sum that up for you? Because remember, Passover brought us out by the blood of the crucified one. We went in through the door, his terms. First fruits, Christ is the first fruits of the dead. The one who brought in this dispensation, God brought it in. And Christ lives within us. So we have the first fruits. We are the first fruits. And result of being, you know, the first fruits, which will lead into the Feast of Weeks, harvest. Okay? Now go back to Leviticus chapter 23. Rosh Hashanah, the blowing of trumpets. Leviticus chapter 23, verses 23 on to verse 25. Leviticus chapter 23. Oh. Oh, we skipped verse 22. Let's read verses 22 on to verse 25. We were supposed to read verse 22 in the uh, talking about the Feast of Weeks. So, And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of thy field when thou reapest. Neither shalt thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the stranger, I am the Lord your God. A little leftover for the poor and the stranger. I appeal, you know how the Lord said, uh, Hero heavens, hero earth. The, us Gentiles were grafted in. Okay. Now, 23 on to verse 25. Sorry for skipping verse 22 previously. But Rosh Hashanah, the blowing of trumpets. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, and holy convocation. Ye shall do no civil work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So a blowing of trumpets. Hmm. Notice here about the blowing of trumpets. Go to Numbers. Go to Numbers, chapter 10. Numbers, chapter 10. The blowing of trumpets. 
Numbers chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. Very interesting here. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. And the Lord spake on, on Numbers chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets. I Don't get ahead of me. Make thee two trumpets of silver. Two trumpets. Of a whole piece shalt thou make them. Thou shalt, that thou mayest use them for the calling of the assembly. Called out assembly. Those who are called out. Oh, church. And for the journeying of the camps. Hmm. Two trumpets. I know about the seven trumpets in Revelation. Okay? I get that. But look, look, don't look at me. Look at this. Look at that verse. Two trumpets. Make thee two trumpets of silver. Of a whole piece shalt thou make them. That thou mayest use them for the calling of the assembly. Gathering everybody together. Because of the sound, uh, because of the trump. The sound that the trumpet makes. And for the journeying of the camps. The camps. The tribes of Israel. Two trumpets. Hmm. Two trumpets. In the book of Revelation, there are seven trumpets. Yes. Yes. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I told you we were going to go there quite a bit. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51, verses 51 on to verse 58. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling, it's going to be quicker than that, you know, twinkling, of an eye at the last Trump. And no, this doesn't mean Donald Trump, you idiot brethren of mine of America. An idiot is someone who is void of logic and reason. The Trump prophecy, you are kidding me. The Jesuits are going to use Donald Trump just like they used Napoleon. You watch. You watch. Okay? Ugh. Ugh, Trump. Oh. Beg, beg your pardon, beg your pardon, okay? Well, beg your pardon, that just chaffs my buttocks. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. Trump, that's what, the, that's the sound of the trumpet. That's the trumpet, the sound that the trumpet makes, okay? For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible, this worthless skin suit, must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, we have not been called on to wrath, but to obtain salvation, the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? But thanks be God, which giveth, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. Unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Look at that verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet's trumpet shall sound. And you read Revelation chapter 4, I believe it is, where he says, come up hither. Okay. Okay, remember on the Damascus Road, by the way, Paul, the Lord appeared unto Paul, and a big light shone onto him and his buddies that were with him, 
but yet he was the only one who saw the Lord. The others didn't. So, what am I getting at? I'll show you what I'm getting at. Go to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. John chapter 12. We want verses 23 on to verse 30. Check this out. John chapter 12. Verses 23 on to verse 30. And Jesus answered. And Jesus answered them saying. The hour has come. That the son of man should be glorified. Verily, verily I say unto you. Except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Oh, you see the comparison uh, about uh, corruptible must put on, on, on corruption and this mortal must put on immortality? Okay, get it? Let's continue. He that loveth his life shall lose it. Yeah, you love this world? <laughs> You're an enemy of God. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. Soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, Glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. And these wicked Catholic uh, Trinitarians, how could God the Father who is the soul, how could he speak then? You wicked Catholics, <laughs> you don't know who God is. It has been explained to you. But you don't get it because the natural man receiveth not the things of the Lord trying to talk to you Catholics you Trinitarians about who God is there are some out there who are ignorant about it yes that's one thing but you diehard Trinitarians you're lost you're lost there's no way you don't serve the true God how could you be saved then But look at, at that verse, 28. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people therefore said, the people therefore that stood by and heard it, said that it thundered. Others said, an angel spake to him. So some heard thunder, and others heard someone speaking. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. For your sakes. Why did we look at this? When we get called up, I believe everyone's going to hear it. But see, only we are going to hear our names. Maybe? I don't know. But see, the point is, God will call us by, he will say, come up hither. Okay? Okay. We will hear a sound, but others might hear like a thunder or something. But see, God can distinguish and single out people like he did with Paul, like he we just saw there. Other, some thought or heard, heard thunder. Others heard the voice. And our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father himself said this voice. But yet some thought it thundered. While Paul on the road to Damascus, he saw the Lord while his buddies didn't. You see what I'm getting at? You get it? Okay? Now, go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verses 13 on to verse 18. Okay? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 4, excuse me. Verses 13 on to verse 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Dead. Okay? I just lost my place. <laughs> yes, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. I think of my best friend. 
who lost his auntie, our sister. You'll see her again. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. How many of us are going to be alive and remaining once they get done with all this stuff? For the Lord himself shall descend with, from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, the sound that a trumpet makes. Rosh Hashanah, the blowing of trumpets. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. This is talking about the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. The redemption of the purchased possession. Erroneously referred to as the pre-tribulation rapture. Hey, yeah, rapture is not in the scriptures. Rapture isn't even in the, in a Bible, if I'm not mistaken. You never know with what the Catholics are doing nowadays. Okay, but then again, Catholics who are Christians say that Christians are going to go through the, uh, the Great Tribulation. They're right. Church of the living God isn't. Okay. Now, in the, in the book of Revelation, the trumpets, there are seven trumpets, begins in chapter 8, um, the seven trumpets of judgment, okay? The Church of the living God is not on the earth for those seven trumpets that get blown during the uh, book of Revelation, okay? The book of Revelation, uh, after we get caught up, that is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? It's for the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? But remember we looked in numbers about the two trumpets? Two trumpets, okay? Two trumpets. One for the calling of assemblies, the uh, Church of the Living God, the church is the called out assembly, Two trumpets, one for um, calling the assembly together and the second trum tr uh, trumpet for the journeying of the camps for the 12 tribes scattered abroad, journeying, going through the time of Jacob's trouble. I found that, I thought that was very, my wife pointed that out to me, actually, praise the Lord for it. She, she mentioned about the two trumpets and we looked at it, it's like, wow, yeah. Very interesting, eh? Very interesting. And like I said, uh, we're not going to get into the uh, seven trumpets in the book of Revelation. Just wanted to address the uh, Rosh Hashanah, the blowing of trumpets, and in numbers about the two trumpets. One for the calling assemblies, and the one for the goes for the journeying of the camps. Okay? And Israel, the 12 tribes, Israel, the Jew, the Hebrew, is going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. We, the first trumpet, we get caught up. I know, there are seven trumpets in the uh, book of Revelation. I get that, okay? I get that, I know. Okay? Now, now this is where this one is going to change a little bit. And this should be the place where we stop this video and make part two. So, we will continue this video on the fifth fifth the day of atonement but that is going to be it for this video and uh, the link for this video uh the link for part two will be in this video this video will be in the link uh for in the description box you know what i'm saying in the second part okay because gonna need some time we, we still got some more to go another two-part video i'm not gonna rush it can't squeeze it i'm not gonna squeeze it all into one so anyway this is it for part one see you in part two okay